Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, and it's time for another international break. Woo. But we still have some Celtic-related things to talk about, so let's get a wee catch-up in before we go into that international break. Some reassuring news, a meltdown to cover. We still have plenty to talk about, which is, is good for now. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. It'd be much appreciated as we try and power towards 50,000 subscribers, as always, during these international breaks. And thankfully, this is the last one for a while. Please bear with me. Please have some patience. We might not have an awful lot to talk about. We might also have the return of the FIFA career mode, for example. And I know it's not to everyone's taste, but your support to the channel is paramount. So as always, like, subscribe, all that jazz. Thank you very much. So yesterday was good, wasn't it? Celtic 6, Aberdeen 0, a fantastic performance by Celtic as they kept that 8 point lead at the top of the table. We were just brilliant from start to finish. We had a fantastic uh, contribution from everybody on the park and we answered back the critics who, you know, may have asked a lot of questions on Tuesday night and for as much as that still hurts and for as much as it's still unacceptable, we bounced back the best way we possibly could with a 6-0 win of our own. Um, so it takes us into this international break on a positive note. When we come back, there is still obviously work to do, both domestically and in those last two Champions League games. But from now till January, we've just got to get as many points on the board as possible, try and maintain the dominance, the firm grip at the top of the Scottish Premiership, and things will be fine. Um, here is the league table heading into this international break. As you can see, Celtic sitting pretty at the top of the table and look listen if you came to me at the start of the season and asked me I think this is what the second or third international break but if you asked me by November you sit unbeaten at the top of the table how would I feel I would tell you I'd bite your hand off for it I'd be absolutely delighted and that's exactly how I feel about our um, opening to this season um, listen Brendan Rodgers in his first year here managed to do a full season invincible across all three competitions Technically, he could still do an Invincible League campaign this season if he really wanted to. Um, do I think we'll do that? I'm not going to say that, but look, we've started off well. Fantastic start to the season. Not an awful lot to complain about. And a 6-0 win. Lovely. The guy grabbing all the headlines yesterday and the guy who stirred up the most conversation on social media is this guy, Luis Palma, who yesterday was absolutely fantastic and has been for the last few weeks. He has been a real standout in this Celtic side. I think that you're looking at Matt O'Reilly probably as a player of the season so far, but Luis Palma is quickly creating a conversation right behind him because since coming into this side and becoming a consistent starter, he has offered so much week after week. He's becoming a fan favourite. And when he came into the club, people were writing him off after 45 minutes against Feyenoord. And I'm so happy to see him pro prove those ones dafties. Because there was no point in writing him off after 45 minutes against Feyenoord when he was barely at the club. He'd only arrived a couple of weeks before. He came in with very impressive stats from his time at Aris in Greece. Um, I remember doing the live stream of the video when he signed and I said I was excited to see what he could do. He could potentially be the Jota replacement. And right now, he's putting all the conversation and evidence in front of us to say that he is the Jota replacement. This has been his start to the season, the statistics to start the season. 12 competitive appearances for Celtic in that time. 5 goals and 5 assists. That's 10 goal contributions in his opening 12 games. And remember, he was incredibly unlucky not to have another one against Lazio in the Champions League when the goal was chopped offside. So he's had a fantastic start to life here. Yesterday, that assist for the last goal. Was it the last goal? No, I think it was the fifth goal. The crossover it is delightful. The technical ability this boy possesses is really, really impressive. Um, I think that he brings a real quality to that front three. Um, that was hard to replace with Jota going out the door. You know, we, we talk how much we love Dyson Maida, for example, and how much we love Liela Bada. But I think one thing about those two players in particular was they didn't quite have the polished technical ability that Jota did uh, when he left the club. I think Luis Palmas came in and replaced that straight away. And there's still a long way to go. It's a very tough set of boots to fill Jota. I think he was a fantastic player. But in 12 games, very quickly, Luis Palma has put the evidence in front of us to suggest he'll have a, a very fruitful career here at Celtic. Love him, he deserves all the praise that he's been getting on social media over the last 24 hours and it's going to be an interesting season to watch him um, from now until May. 
and love them to bits. Right, shall we get into the topics of discussion for today then? We've done a brief recap on yesterday. We have a couple of bits of news to talk about and we're going to start with the update on Kyogo Furuhashi who of course yesterday took a really sore one in that Aberdeen game. He was murdered on the park basically. I don't want to play the clip on screen for you but I'll put a still image if I can. Um, he took that head knock which left him grounded for uh, quite a while. Uh, there was a risk of him being stretched off the park. He did manage to walk off the park, uh, much to my delight. I was glad to see him walk off the park. But it looked a really sore one. And that's that's the kind of you know head clash or, or, or challenge that can change a footballer's career, um, depending on the outcome. And I'm just very glad that Kyogo seems to be doing okay after it. However, he has provided us with an update this morning. He has spoken, he's broke his silence after that horrendous head clash. Uh, and this is the reassuring message that he's given to supporters. Translated from Japanese, this is what Kyogo put on his Instagram story this morning. He said, I don't know how long it took, but I don't remember anything about how my teammates worried about me afterwards or how I walked off the park myself. When I was told at the hospital that everything was fine, I felt that the gods of soccer were protecting me. I will continue to work hard towards the future without forgetting my gratitude. So... There you go, a very brief update from Kyogo. The main thing that he's included in that is that the doctors have, to have told him he's fine, he's okay, he'll now be in recovery and taking it easy for the next wee while until he's back to 100%. But that is really worrying, isn't it, about the sudden aftermath, aftermath of that injury, the fact he doesn't remember being out, how long he was out, walking off the park, any of the communication with the teammates, just shows you the severity of... Uh, the, the injury that he sustained yesterday and the head knock that he took and these things can't be taken lightly you can never be too careful with head knocks in any sport um, but in, in football you know they, they don't come around that often so you've got to be very very careful and it does sound worrying but the main thing is I'm glad he's okay um, and first and foremost I wish him the absolute best with his recovery I hope that over the next two weeks he, he feels a lot better and he's ready to come back when he's ready um, but it's good to see that the doctors have said he's fine. It definitely sounds like a concussion. I think we can all come to that conclusion. I think the, the poor lad is concussed <laughs> if he doesn't remember walking off the park. Um, but apparently he'll be now monitored by the Celtic medical staff. He won't be taking part in any training. He won't be taking part in anything at all until he is fully able. So there'll be extensive tests and monitoring over the next couple of weeks. I hope that it's a miraculously quick recovery and he's ready to come back right into the side. But first and foremost, you've got to prioritise the health and safety of Kyogo uh, and he'll be ready to come in when he does. Uh, but it does mean he won't be travelling to Japan anymore. Brendan Rodgers did confirm post-match yesterday that he won't be travelling uh, with the Japan squad anymore for the international break. He was meant to go on international duty with the senior side, but uh, that's not going to happen. This is what Brendan Rodgers said. He said, it wasn't great for him. It's a nasty blow. He won't travel to Japan. He'll stay here and recover. The medical team will just make sure he's okay. So that's a, a shame for Kyogo, obviously, probably very excited to go back home and, and take part in the Japanese national team camp but um, that's got to be going off now for him uh, it's all about rest it's all about getting better but I'm glad that the, the news is more reassuring than anything you never know how these things can go um, so yeah best wishes to Kyogo and his recovery and I hope we see him back soon before we wrap things up today, why don't we have one more discussion and why don't we talk about something that happened in the aftermath of Celtic's win yesterday. Why don't we talk about Chris Boyd? As much as I don't like talking about Chris Boyd, I feel like we've got to polish up a few things here because yesterday he made some outlandish claims live on Sky Sports, live on national television, live in his professional setting. Some that would probably be more suited to a setting like this in front of a YouTube camera. So Chris Boyd obviously was delighted yesterday with Celtic's result against Aberdeen. Um, he was happy that we were still top of the league by eight points and he didn't hide that, did he? This was the comments that he 
uh, put out yesterday on Sky Sports. Uh, you lose three goals inside seven minutes. It's embarrassing. Barry won't have a problem getting them up for next week or next game, sorry, because Rangers are in town. So, but, uh, no Barry Robson, sorry. Chris Boyd has basically insinuated live on Sky Sports that uh, Aberdeen have laid down to Celtic as they usually do in, in a lot of their own words. That they have laid down to Celtic and they only turn up against Rangers because they're playing Rangers. That's basically what he's insinuated live in his professional setting on Sky Sports while everybody is subject to his um, very one-sided opinions. Um, listen, you can say what you want about teams lying down and you can hold your own opinions, but to go and display it live on Sky Sports when you're meant to be paying for a level-headed and unbiased view of football, Chris Boyd coming out with comments like this on the regular uh, are truly baffling. And I know that the Sky themselves will absolutely love it because it gets them clicks, it gets them retweets, it gets them attention, and attention gets them money. Um, but the fact that this is the expert analysis, expert analysis, I should put in quotation marks, that, that we are subject to paying for through a Sky Sports service is absolutely ridiculous. That is something you would hear on YouTube. Cough, cough, look at myself, cheek to talk. But that's fine. I, I you know, I can hit out with stuff. I'm the, I, the people who watch me choose to watch me and they get it for absolutely nothing. You know what I mean? Um, that is something that the next, that, that's just as insightful as the next roaster that sits behind a camera. You know? There's no way that you can tell me that he is sitting in a position and is better qualified than anybody else. Because some of the stuff he hits out with is pretty much childish. It's something that you would hear after your, you know, your dad's pal in the Loudoun Tavern. It's not something you should be hearing on Sky Sports. Um, we have a cheek to be called the paranoid ones. We really do. You know, time after time, Celtic fans are getting labelled as paranoid because we take wee digs at the referee, because we take digs at the VAR, uh, because of the penalty numbers and stuff like that. We get called paranoid. It's apparently a conspiracy theory all the time with us. However, you've got Chris Boyd, who is the Rangers cheerleader in Scottish football's media, um, out there claiming that Aberdeen lie down to Celtic and only perform against Rangers. If Rangers can't get the job done against Aberdeen, that's their own, that's their own problem. That's that. We've had our struggles against Aberdeen. To sit there and say that Aberdeen never try against us is, is just absolute nonsense. When we've had our struggles against them in the last few years, they've pushed us to the limits in cup finals. Um, it's just nonsense. It's th this, this narrative that people create in their own heads and Chris Boyd wants to put it on the television to get all the Rangers fans on his side retweeting his opinions. Um, it, look, listen, at the end of the day... It doesn't affect me. It's not like it keeps me up at night, Chris Boyd going and saying stuff like this, but I just think it's hilarious how, you know, some of the, the stick somebody like Chris Sutton takes or John Hartson takes for things that he'll say in the television. And listen, they come out with some ridiculous stuff, that's things at times as well. That's the job of being a pundit overall will get you done for that because you're constantly speaking. But to come out with something as outlandish as what Boyd did yesterday in national television is just hilarious. Celtic were fantastic yesterday. They were unbelievably good. Aberdeen couldn't lay a finger on them. And instead of Chris Boyd just sitting there and giving his honest opinion about Celtic being good, he decides he has to spin that narrative. It can't be about Celtic being really good in play. It can't be about some really well-worked goals. It has to be this big paranoid theory about how Aberdeen always lie down to Celtic. It's as simple as that. He just doesn't have it in him to sit down and admit Celtic are a better team just now, even when they're eight points clear of his beloved Rangers. It's as simple as that. I'd love to sit there in the Sky Sports couch myself and challenge him about it, but, you know, I think his dummy would be spat out the pram long before you could have a sensible grown-up conversation. So, yeah, going to be hilarious to see how the next few months go, how the next derby goes, um, and how Aberdeen Rangers goes. Because let's see if Aberdeen step it up, eh? Let's see if uh, Barry Robson does... It'd bring the level up a notch because Rangers are in town. So that about does it for today's video. Of course, Celtic aren't back in action now till the 25th of November when we take on Motherwell at Celtic Park. So we have a wee while before Celtic are back in action. Scotland will have to do this for the next couple of weeks. Two games for Scotland, of course. Thursday and Sunday, I believe. I just want Celtic back as quickly as possible. Hopefully the next two weeks fly in but that's it for today thank you for listening or watching if you have enjoyed please make sure to hit like and subscribe and i'll see you all next time